Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Relics, and today we will be going over a couple more players from the LA Kings from the past season of 2020, uh, 2022 to 2023. Um, going over what they did good, bad, and what they need to improve on going forward to help the Kings be a better team. Um, so today, we'll go over Kevin Fiala. So, as you guys may know or not know, Kevin Fiala came from the Minnesota Wild the season prior and signed a big contract, um, a seven years actually, seven years, uh, about just under eight mil a year average annual. And uh, it was a lot of talk saying, hey, can he be the guy who comes in and helps the Kings score? And so my biggest thing was I don't deny Fiala can score. He can definitely be a great player. And he, you know, for most of his career, he has been. There's no doubt about that. But the reputation coming with him was that he is very undisciplined and he has a attitude problem, especially when things don't go his way on the ice. If people pick on him, he, he retaliates. He takes things into his own hands. So maybe not being in the case of fighting, but definitely like slashing or roughing or something, something to get the referee's attention. And so... That's where we will start off today. Um, he led the team. He led the team, the Kings team, in penalty minutes with 52 penalty minutes total. Um, just to throw it out there, that that is uh, um, what I'm trying to say here. Sorry, all 52 is what I actually want to say. All 52 penalty minutes were minor penalties, not a single fighting major, misconduct, they're all minor penalties, every single one, so that's 26 to lead the Kings team, and amongst the entire league, he led 15th in the league, 15th in the entire NHL in minor penalties taken, that's a lot, and for someone who is supposed to be skilled and be scoring, that is a lot of penalties, so... The biggest thing is, is he worth the money? Yes. Yes, he is. Um, he proved me wrong. and I, I said that he... I said myself last year that he wouldn't do as good as everyone is hyping him up to be. Um, he would lead the Kings scoring. He would do, you know, provide a lot of offense. I didn't think he would do, you know, the price that he, we paid for him. But I was wrong. He did do good. He did do good enough. But he could have did better. So, just going over his stats in general. 69 games played. He did miss uh, quite a few games because of a knee injury he received in March uh, by Andrew Cogliano of the Avalanche. Uh, it was knee on knee contact, and Fiala was uh, left the game injured. Came back the next game, but uh, his injury was placed in my injury reserve retroactive to that game. So, that's unfortunate. And by coming back, I think he made it worse. So, uh, definitely missed him in the uh, start of the playoffs, but, you know, things happen. You, know, you can't just rely on one guy, right? So, he did play 69 games, which is really good, and then uh, for his first season. He's also got a 23-goal season, as well as 49 assists. So, again, second in the team on, in scoring, uh, two points under Kopitar, his 72. Uh, Fiala's 72, that is. The only bad part is he only had a plus two rating. That's horrible, okay? So for a top six guy, that is the terrible plus minus rating. He's not playing enough defense. Um, just like I said with Kempe in the last video, uh, Fiala too, he uh, didn't back check. Uh, didn't matter which line he was on the first half of the season. He was just thinking about himself for the most part, trying to get the scoring. Didn't back check at all, and he totally blew up the lead, you know? Um, that was the problem I had going back, you know, previously to Andreas Athanasiu, where he all th thought only about offense and didn't think about the defense, and he turned over the puck a lot. Um, Fiala didn't necessarily turn over the puck, but he didn't back check, and so that led to a lot of goals against, uh, where there's a lot of odd man rushes coming back into our defensive zone. So, unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. But, I will say, just like Kempe, Fiala did better, though. Second half of the season, Fiala did better uh, than Kempe did, improving his defensive status. Um, Fiala did get dig uh, downgraded to the third line to play with Lazat, 
and playing with Lazat definitely improved his game a ton. Um, he also switched between the second and first line as well, but finally ended up on the first. Um, but overall, I think him sliding up and down the lineup definitely helped the Kings for balance. Uh, gives us more options, both offensively and defensively. And I think playing with Lazat was the biggest thing that helped him a lot. So props to Lazat for making him a better winger. And of course, Fiala for helping Lazat be a better center. Um, uh, on power play wise, he did good. First unit, 7 power play goals, 17 power play assists for 24 power play points. Um, he did a really good job. Got also had two game winning goals on the season. Um, he shows he can do deeks. A lot of good deeks. A lot of good things uh, offensively from him. Good shot. You know, he, he knows how to move the puck around. And he has good vision too. He has made good passes. Um, but like I said, the defense part of it just needs to improve a little bit. And, you know, he'll be a lot better. And then stay, stay disciplined. Um, the only other guy who had more, you know, only other guy on the Kings who had a lot of penalties was Lazat. He had 25 minor penalties to Lazat, uh, Fiala's 26. But... Unlike Fiala, Lazat was drawing penalties as well. It's Lazat was probably the King's best penalty uh, draw drawer. <laughs> uh, he drew the most penalty, probably the most penalties on the team. Lazat did. Um, Fiala can't say the same. He's the one who was taking them, you know, purposely. So to me, that's where he needs to improve. Um, but in general, I was proven wrong. Fiala played a great, you know, season, and I think he, if he keeps it up. Uh, and stays healthy, of course. He could lead the team in scoring this year, as well as, uh, you know, just stay on the top six for sure. And, I mean, that's the projected, you know, lineup is that he will be on the second line with Dubois as his winger. But we'll see what happens. Again, it's just projected. And then, uh, so that's Fiala's season. Um, I do expect him maybe another 70-something point season. Nothing higher, but nothing less, really. And then uh, going on to Victor Arvidsson. He uh, was probably one of the more consistent two ways, I would say, as far as game by game basis. Um, you know, we always think about like Kopi and Kempe. Like Kopi's super defensive, okay, but he doesn't score all the time offensively. Then we think of Kempe. He scores a lot, but he doesn't play defense. And I think Arvidsson fits the book for playing a decent two way game, both offense and defense. Um, the only problem is he's on the second line where I felt like the second line got scored on way too much. They turned over the puck way too much. Um, I don't blame Arvidsson as much as Deneau and more. And so his stats reflect that. And I think, uh, you know, going forward, I think the whole second line, Arvidsson, Moore, and Deneau, they need to improve. But let's go over Arvidsson's stats real quick. He got 77 games played this season. Um, he got 26 goals, which is great, 33 assists, and, you know, for 59 points. Um, the only b bad part was he got a minus 4. So, hold on a second. All oh, right, yeah, so just to remind ourselves, uh, Arvidsson actually got 4th in scoring on the team. And uh, 24 penalty minutes, not too bad, a couple minors here and there, right? Big, No big deal. Uh, power play-wise, he got 10 goals and 4 15 assists on the power play for 25 power play points. That's absolutely amazing considering he played uh, second unit and first unit. He moved up and down every now and then. I believe he finished the, the season on the first unit though. He was the left wing with uh, Kopi and Dowdy on the points and then Fiala and Kempe as bumper and shooter on the right side. So as a right hand shot, Arvidsson had took the left side for the one timers and it left a lot of options for the power play. Um, that was something I did like, but at the same time, you know, I didn't mind having Arvidsson play either unit. Um, he was definitely not the reason why we got scored against uh, as far as shorthanded. But, uh, you know, he, I think he, uh, he definitely played a strong offensive game this season, especially since he stayed healthy compared to the last season where he went injured into the playoffs. Um, so yeah, that was really good. He was second most on the team with power play points, actually. And uh, time on ice, 1706, not bad. You know, he was second line, so that's really good minutes, actually. Um, and considering he came off a season where he had surgery for a herniated disc, that's a really good 
recovery, I think. Um, again, I think if he plays just as well as he did the, uh, you know, this past season, I think going forward, he's going to be playing most likely on the third line with, you know, with Mo, uh, Moore and Deneau again. Uh, again, projected lineups. But uh, if he does, I expect him to do another 50-point season, maybe 60. I don't know. Um, again, the Kings lineup is kind of questionable. Uh, but you have the pairings of Kopi and Kempe on top, Fiala and and uh, Dubois on the second, and then you got the whole second line moving down to the third line. If that's already a second line from last or the past couple seasons, just think what they can do on the third line, you know, against third line players. So we'll see. Um, the only flaw I had about Arvidsson's game was he loves to enter the zone hard and fast, and then do a super stop and spin out of it. And when he does that, he spins out too hard, slips, falls, and turns over the puck in the offensive zone. Um, then that leads to immediate rush going back. Um, as far as that is concerned, if he could prevent that, or if anything, at least get the dump in before he falls over and turns over the puck, I think the Kings would you know, benefit from a lot more forecheck and probably put more offensive pressure on their opponents. But... Every time he fell over, it's like, oh, here it goes. Here it goes on his own, enters his own, crosses the blue line, and then falls. <laughs> and so I was really concerned that that was like a huge detriment to the team. Um, it happened multiple occasions. It was almost like every single uh, game too. So if he can improve on that, improve his skating, I think he could definitely be a strong asset to the team going into the next year. Um, other than that, I honestly don't see any other flaws from him. Like I said, he may have had a minus four, but amongst Moore and Deneau, he was definitely a stronger player. And I think if he keeps up his play, um, he'll be a plus this season, as well as a uh, another 20-goal scorer, another 50-point scorer. And, you know, who knows? Maybe he can uh, provide even more offense. Uh, again, like I said, they're going to be playing the third line most likely. And with, not to say, you know, the league is weak or anything, but usually your first and second line are your strong lines third line is kind of your eh, in between and the fourth is you know the bomb guys the, gr the grinders and stuff so if they can score against the lower end players that'd be great but uh we'll see we'll see what happens like i said it's all projected stuff but i'm just trying to get my opinion on these guys so that's fiala and arvidsson those guys were the next guys scoring fiala was second scoring for uh arvidsson fourth and yeah so we now we've done the captain kempe Arvidsson and Fiala. Um, we'll see who comes next. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do these in pairs until I get to the bomb guys. So we'll see who comes up next. Um, again, I'm not going to go in order of scoring or anything like that. I'm just going to go in order of who I felt were the top players versus the bottom players. Um, not necessarily in skill, but just in general, who are the more important guys to the bottom guys. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys liked the video, hit the like button. Uh, comment down below what you guys thought my you know, my opinions do you guys agree do you guys disagree let me know i want to know um and you guys subscribe to the channel if you haven't again like i said before in other videos almost 90 plus percent of you guys are not subscribed so please consider subscribing so you can keep up with, uh with what i have to say as well as other content and if you guys have anything to say just let me know you know feel free to send me any comments and let me have it i want to i want to talk to you guys about it you know you know, I want to hear you guys what you guys have to say. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Let me know. Um, but until the next video, have a great day. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Stay tuned for that. And yeah. Uh, going forward, just one more thing. Uh, I don't think uh, I'm going to do like the guys who played uh, like just a couple games or were in their entry level contract situations. But we'll see. I will think about it. So that's just to, just to keep your heads up of who's to come next. But again, we're only in this top the the beginning, so we'll see who uh, who comes up next. All right, see you guys.